Welcome to Future Role Model, a podcast that praises being unconventional and redefines what it means to be a role model. And today I have one of my favorite role models on the planet, <laughs> Diane. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, <Dana>. everybody. <laughs> What's going on? This is Dana Moon. Hi. And Dana is fabulous. I'm a role model? Yeah. No, I don't <laughs> feel like one. No, that's why you're going to be a, such a great New Year's Eve episode, because it'll be perfect parlay into 2019. <laughs> is she a role model? Question mark. <laughs> Uh, this episode should just be a question mark. It should be titled <laughs> Data Moon Role Model Question Mark. That's why I have a question mark tattooed on my arm. I've Where? always loved the Riddler so much. Oh. And, you know, I everything's even, questionable. I didn't even know that that That's was what a, it was. Yeah. It was That's cool. Well, it's a little bit. I need to get it. I do. I need to get it retouched or something because I got it done probably eight or nine years ago um, when I was with my ex. And basically kind of like to fuck with him. I told him I was running to get groceries and instead I just went to get this tattoo. Oh, and, and I was gone for like, you were like seven hours. You were like, this is our relationship status, a question mark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was like shortly before we broke up and, uh, I went to like this apprentice guy and I was like, I want a Riddler, like the old school riddle bomb from the Batman comic books. Yeah. And he just took some handsome liberties and like doodled on me a little bit. So it's kind of a question mark and kind of like... There's other question marks on it. Yeah. It's, you know what? I thought it was a snake. I thought yeah, they were snakes. A lot of people think it's like snakes or you, some people yeah. are like, is that an ear? And I'm like, why the fuck would I have an ear? Well, <laughs> you're the type of person, arm. you know, you're a little unpredictable. I know. Yeah. You would have snakes. <laughs> I would. You would have snake tattoos. Yeah. You would have pet snakes. Yeah. And I don't know. <laughs> So Dana, yeah. oh my gosh, I, I've known Dana for a while. I like Dana a lot. <laughs> uh, what if you were like, Dana is the sucks. worst. She sucks. Um, well, that's what I was terrible. just talking. So I had TJ Chambers on just now. I'm doing back to back episodes. So Dana's episode is going to be coming out on New Year's Eve. So while you guys are all getting ready. Happy 2019. Dolled up in your sequins. You can be listening to Dana's flashy balls. Yeah. Uh, vocally. Oh, I got those chopped off. <laughs> oh, shit. I had balls and then they got them removed. <laughs> I'm a real woman now. I <laughs> I have I have balls still. Yeah. Although my voice says uh, the opposite. When you're Diane, of course. When you're Diane. <laughs> sometimes she just pops up. But it's it's funny how like with this with this podcast in particular, I am really adamant about only having people on that I just really like to hang out with mm -hmm. or like people that I actually know pretty well. Yeah. I feel or it's like, just the chemistry is like off, right? Yeah. If it's somebody. Which it can still be hard. Like some of my some of my good friends in comedy, and I was just talking about this while we were waiting for you, but um Sometimes you have people on that you've known forever and they're just not great conversationalists on podcasts, you know? Yeah. Name names. <laughs> Let's blast them. Not natural conversationalists. They'll like yeah. wait for you to like stir the, con which is fine. Time for that. that is your job. But like sometimes, sometimes I'll get done with certain episodes and I'm like, wow, I'm fucking tired. Like it just takes a lot out I of just, you. I feel like it's, it's just a normal <laughs> conversation. And I, like for me, I just, um, in any conversation, I just like tell too much in information about myself. Yeah. Like, I like TMI it. Yeah. So I think that that's why I have so much fun on podcasts because that's what like people listening want to hear. That well, they want to hear that, about your yeast infection. They do want to. By hear the about way, that. cleared up. Oh my god! So um, <laughs> when I had Jacqueline on, we were talking about she, UTIs. UTIs. Yeah. Yep. And and this beautiful woman in San Diego with a company called West Coast Mint sent me a box of UTI supplements. And so I have those. What do you mean, cranberries? No, it's like really good, like UTI supplement preventative, preventative stuff. Yeah. So um, that shout out to her. I'm, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> and so maybe she's got product for yeast I'm, infections well, too. I'm, she can send us some. Yeah, send 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 them up. Send them up to me. <laughs> send them up to me. I uh, do. I sound too desperate. I'm like, I need them. God, please, please send them. <laughs> no, I feel like I'm the type of friend where like all my girlfriends message me or call me whenever they have like a UTI or yeast infection or like weird, even like butt things. I'm like, why am I that that? I'm, I'm that friend. You're that friend. I'm that friend. We each but have I actually, to. I secretly love it. We each have to own a piece of the property and so you get like the below the belt region yeah. and you, you, you get tits yeah get tits? I get tits and and face you know what's weird <laughs> so I actually so when I was living in like a really unhealthy living environment I, I really feel like UTI and uh yeast infection are linked to stress yeah um because I think everything's linked to stress oh my god I would get them like I, I haven't had them. I mean, as much as I talk about it, you think I have it all the time. I haven't had like any of those in like probably four years. Mm -hmm. But when I was living in a stressful uh, 
situation, it was like literally like every other month. Yeah. And and then I got out of that living situation and it's like has cleared it up. up. Yeah. Not Interesting. So I yeah, I think a lot of it is uh, is, you know, do you think it has anything to do with because I feel like we <laughs> I was just on this show in San Diego called Story Party Tour a couple of days ago. And it's like this it's a tour that has been in I think they just did their 350th show. They've been in like 50 or 60 different countries. Oh, wow. And um, every single night of the year, they have a show in a different country or different city. And uh, it's all about like sex and dating stories. And so they have like different people submit their stories and they can share them at the end before the final comic goes up. And uh, somebody was talking about yeast infections before I went on stage. And so when I got up, I was talking to her. And I was like, yeast infections don't come from dirty dicks. They come from dirty fingernails. Oh. And I stand by that because I think men wash their dicks more than they wash their hands. I would agree with that. Right? I don't know. Dirty fingernails are worth it. I don't have a dick anymore, so I can't <laughs> vouch. I can't vouch for that. But I do, I mean, I don't know. Maybe I was finger banging myself a lot with dirty fingernails. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. You got to wash know. your fingernails beforehand because I think that's where a lot of the germs come from. Yeah. When I when I lived in a colder climate, I feel like I would always like finger myself for warmth. <laughs> I was like so cold. <laughs> my hands were so cold, and my vagina so warm. And I'd just be watching TV with like a finger in my vagina. And then I, I, I didn't realize how weird it was until somebody walked in, and I was like, my fingers in my vagina. And my <laughs> mom's trying weird. to have a conversation. With me. <laughs> like, slowly remove it. Oh my god. Okay, I feel like that's. I feel like there is some sort of truth to that because remember there. I don't remember what movie this was back in the day, but there was. The having sex to keep warm yes. thing. What movie Everybody was that? Everybody couples up in the winter time. Oh yeah, that's a People true thing too. People couple up in the winter time. You get you put on some weight, you know, for extra warmth. Also, by the way, men. I feel like men have their hands down their pants so much. We can have a finger up our cooch every once. Yeah, in a while. maybe it's not even for sexual purposes. No, it's just there. It's just there. Like why can't? Fine, if you want to walk around with your hands in your in your pants, I can too. If I had balls, I Equality. would probably hold them often. Yeah. Just like for support. You also, know, like, they're fun to play. They're really fun. They're, we, you know, used to pay when you were a kid at arcades, you would pay for the little squishy balls. Remember those toys? Uh huh. And that's what balls feel like. Yeah. They're very fun to play with. They are. And I've definitely done that before. And and then I've heard them say, ow. Because yeah, I guess you, you can't. Because you can't, can't go too wish hard. too hard. <laughs> yeah. It's like a little. Uh, I don't know. I, I can't think of the name of the toy. Can you tell that I had so much caffeine, by the way? I'm I like, can't. Little, we just little, had, me and TJ just had a beer. Do you want one? No, I'm not drinking. Thank oh, you. Okay. Are yeah. you still on the no drinking train? No drinking train. How long has it been now? All aboard. Uh, October for 1st. October Shit. 1st. Oh my God. Yeah. October, November, Dece that's three yeah. months almost. Yeah, three months. But I did Molly last weekend. So it's like, I'm a basic LA girl. Yeah. Like I'm sober. I'm not drinking. Who has sex to say? Let's fucking party. But <laughs> I've never done Molly in my life. And I got to this party and everyone was drinking. There was like open bar. And I was like, I've always wanted to do Molly. Mm -hmm. um, and my friend had it. And the people that were doing it were all my closest friends. Yeah. And she lives in like a four story mansion. Like four, she has a four story home. And every room has like candles and roses. What does she do? Um, Let's talk about a, that. She's a lawyer for. Um, oh, good for her. Oh, I, I shouldn't. A really famous. Um. Uh, basketball team. Got it. I won't say who. Because okay, that's fair. She probably doesn't want her Molly story being out there. Yeah, she's she has a real job. She's not like a you know one of us, a, a, <laughs> a, a poop head comedian. So th she had like roses and candles and like sheepskin rug in all the rooms. Like she has like a sexual home. Yeah, and I was with like my closest girlfriends and. I was like, let's fucking do this. And she she said it's a really small amount. So I was like, that's perfect. Um, and this is like a one time thing. Like, you know, I've never I've never taken Molly or, you know, before and I don't want to make a habit of it, but I've heard really good things, you mm -hmm. know. And so being a comedian, you guys, it's all about experiences. It is. Um, that's why I justify taking drugs. I'm like, I'm just gonna do a, a little bit of heroin and I need to write a new bit. Maybe <laughs> new five. No, so um I she said it was low dose. Yeah. Um, it was not. It was the opposite. Well, because I saw you the next day. We were on a show together the next day and you were like, my body. 
I was puking. Yeah, it was I was not. sick. I was in bed all day the next day, but it was worth it. I think it was ecstasy laced with um, speed and something else because yeah. I had full visuals. I mean, I literally was like seeing stars. I was seeing rainbows. It was like I was in a Led Zeppelin. I was like in his album. Yeah, that definitely had something else in it. Um, And I was getting a ton of like information. Like I just wanted to be around women. And I was like, I just feel so safe around women. And um, <laughs> a guy that I like spent a weekend in Joshua Tree with, I didn't even recognize Mm-hmm. at all I told you that story yep. yeah and yeah. how you'd met him on shrooms and now you re-met <laughs> him on Molly <laughs> like this guy <laughs> probably thinks I'm completely insane but that's not that untrue yeah I'm I'm, I am 100% <laughs> insane you guys no but I mean I this is the thing with drugs okay drugs have a bad connotation and you know what they they they're not all bad. That's the thing. Okay. Like I'm gonna, mushrooms are amazing. I got to explain. They're legalizing them in Oregon. Yeah. No, that makes sense. I actually haven't ever done mushrooms or any hallucinogen yet. I would like to do really good ones sometime with the right people in the right environment. But I, ha- you know, certain drugs can be exceptionally fun if you are with people that know how to. So let me, let me backtrack. You got to be in the wilderness. You two be of my really close friends really take their music festivals seriously. And they love to do like really good Molly or really good mushrooms or, or whatever it is. Um, so they got an entire like scientific testing kit. So whenever they get something, they take a little bit and they test it and they can see how pure it is. So they know exactly what they're getting. And it's like a first aid it's kit, a, but instead of saving your life, it fucks, fucks you up. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, the, but then she knows, okay. So when we did, we did Molly and Big Bear together, which is the perfect place to do it. There was like eight of us in Big Bear. The kids were there, you know, the kids were there. There was my, one of our friends have two kids and they're the coolest fucking kids in the world, but they were asleep were by the, the time kids on Molly, Molly kicked in. No, <laughs> thank God. Um, were the parents on Molly? No, the parents weren't at all. They were just drinking. And then like two of us did Molly and one of us was on shrooms and we were all just hanging out in this big, like, you know, cabin. It was if super I was, fun. If I was high on Molly, I would probably want to wake the kids up and play with them. Cause I turned into a child yeah. on Molly. Like yeah. I really connected with my inner child. Me too. So. I think we might have fun doing it together, but the stuff I did was so pure. And then she gave me like the five G whatever that is the, um, amino acids for the next day. So I just took all these amino acids and then I was like, Five five HG five HDP or yeah. something. It's actually um good for your immune system to take that. Yeah, it makes you real tired though. Like yeah. you got to take it at night because yeah. if you take it during the day, you're like you're done. She had me take it before I went to bed. Yeah. And so like when I have her around, I will try things because I'm like, oh, I know that it's going to be the right dosage, and they know exactly what we're getting. But I don't do anything hard. Like I would never. I don't know. Is Molly hard? I guess it is a hard drug. I feel like ecstasy is hard. And I feel like if if I was told this was ecstasy, I don't think I would have taken it. Yeah. I think Molly is like a lower, like to me, like Molly and mushrooms are kind of like. They're like a social. Yeah. It's like, you you know, you don't want to like fuck with it all the time. Like to me, it's like ecstasy and like acid. That seems to be like really extreme. Yeah. Like that's something that like, you know. I did a little bit of acid in the desert with a cowboy and then that's the best place to do it. I think. And (laughs) I like had a great experience. I loved it, but I, I don't know. I just don't know what it does to your brain long term. Like I I don't think I would fuck with it ever again. Yeah. It was like, I wanted to experience it once. I took the smallest amount, you know, Mm -hmm. I had sex with a cowboy literally like in the desert, like in the sand. I left my thong on a cactus. It was just a, it was a whole, you know. That's an experience. Experience for, uh, it was, if (laughs) female empowerment, you know, leave your thong on a cactus. (laughs) That's like a great natural hanger, actually. It's kind of designed to hold your panties. I wonder if it's still out there. I think about that thong. (laughs) It was a nice thong. Do you ever think about the cowboy? Oh no, he was the worst. <laughs> he thought because he like left society, he was like above everybody. Like he was just like, oh, I get so annoyed of those kind of people. He's like the way the world is run is so corrupt, and I don't pay taxes anymore, and you know I don't deal with society. And it was just like he thought that he was like above, yeah, it all. off the grid kind of thing. Yeah, and I'm like, you're still talking about them. So like you're still giving them power. 
Right. You know, if it's kind of like those the nomads who are just like, they're like, I'm not falling for the trap of uh, this democracy we live in and these rules we have to abide by in society. I'm not falling for it. And then they like go off and live in the desert or in the woods. And then they just like talk about it all the time. Like it's like, well, you're still giving it energy. Like shut up. Yeah, exactly. Like, and he thought, he thought he just, he looks at people as like, they're like in this rat race. Right. And they're like mice and they're dumb and they have a low, like low IQ. And he's, he figured the he's secret of the universe out and he's and he's so much more intelligent and i'm like dude you're just like you drive a prius and you don't have wi-fi and you do acid every night like you're not better than anybody <laughs> because you don't have a corporate job and you're right. not like you know yeah yeah no playing i totally into know the what you greed mean. it's like right it's, it's annoying it's it's kind of for me it's always been a balance because i'm like okay I, I appreciate random people that I meet on my travels and stuff. And like, you know, I, yeah. I, I get that some people have like crazy outlandish ideas that I don't think are appropriate for my life. But I also am like, all right, we also, we we're in comedy. So we have to be like on social media and those things that a lot of those people look down on. You're like, well, this is kind of a part of I our social media. I, we all hate it, but we have to do it. I hate it. <laughs> so let's talk about your characters for a second oh let's do it because i have been watching these grow for years oh thank you and i I, and i enjoy the process of the dana moon characters oh thank you that's so sweet but what do you think like okay because we were talking a little bit in the green room at the show at west side last week and you had diane you're kind of playing with diane a lot on stage lately yeah i don't i don't know what that's the thing. It's like a constant risk when I do a character on stage because I, I literally like don't know what I'm doing <laughs> <laughs> and I just kind of don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. And that's a good lesson for me because I'm such a control freak. Yep. And with stand up, it's a controlled environment. I have these jokes and I know when I can riff and da, 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 set up punch. But like with a character, it's like, you know, sometimes the jokes with the characters don't work and then the riffing works. So you're just kind of like, it's like a big uh, experiment, it feels like. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. It, well, like growing up as a kid, did mm. you do a lot of character stuff? That's all stuff? I did. I used to I do did. that shit too. I feel like we would have been totally kid friends. I probably spoke in a different voice every single day. <laughs> I would run around and literally play in bushes and like create a whole world. Like there were these bushes next to my house and I would just climb and like the whole, there was a complete world that exists, existed in those bushes and like a complete world that existed like in my basement. Yeah. I would just create, I would play all of the characters <laughs> and my family thought I was schizophrenic. They really thought I, there was something wrong Did with they? me. Oh my yeah, gosh. Because, well, because it's, I mean, I don't know. It's strange also, if your was, kid comes up and they're like British today, you know, <laughs> I was always a different person. And I um I played like talk show host in the mirror. Yep. And I would play the host, the co-host, and the guest. <laughs> and Amazing. I would do that for like five hours. And my my mom and my sister, I could hear them being like, Dana's talking to herself in the bathroom again. You know, so I I actually this is what's interesting about all of that. When I I guess what became an adult, I I never feel like an adult, but I felt like that was like childhood games and that was like fun. Yeah. Um, And there was a kind of a shame, like a little bit of shame attached to it because my family thought I was insane. Right. So there was me kind of blocking that part off for like a good amount of like my early 20s, I'd say. Right. Because you didn't want to. Because I felt insane. Yeah. Because that's how my family treated me. Sure. But it was one of those things where like they really supported creativity and like me going to theater school and me going to USC for theater. Like they were like always encouraged that, but there's still like a part of that like childhood wound that was like, you guys never accepted the like most, the I guess the freest, the most honest part of yourself. Yeah. Which yeah. was just a million different characters. You had siblings? To myself. Yeah. I had an older brother and older sister. Okay. Yeah. I think that's some of the difference too, because I did a lot of that same kind of stuff, like, you know, from like dance competitions to like playing characters and like building, uh, you know, worlds and stuff. But I was an only kid. 
So my parents didn't like have a choice. They were just like, oh, well, I guess this is what we have. So we have to deal with her. Because she doesn't have anybody to play with. <laughs> they yeah. Didn't, yeah. They didn't have anybody to like, you know, compare me to either. Yeah. I, I was their, st- I was their, um, what do you call it? When some, when something is your mean, like your, I don't know, your, Oh. In a science experiment, I was there at their. Oh, okay. <laughs> I can't their think of the word. No. I, <laughs> I know what you mean. Though. You know what I mean. The one that you gar- you um, compare everything to. It'll come to me in like my sleep. But um, yeah, I, I I literally know the word, but I can't. I say do it. too. It's really bothering me. But anyway, <laughs> so there would be moments where I it was like a great you know success for me because I would bring my bro- my older brother and sister into my world. Yeah. Every once in a while I could get them. Like we would I I got them with Jerry Springer. We would play Jerry Springer. Fuck yeah. And so somebody was Jerry and then there was always like a crazy um some crazy big problem or a crazy big story. problem. Yeah, and so you know, I would always dress up. I'd like put socks in my bra. I love to like stuff my boobs cuz like I was flat chested forever. And um <laughs> <laughs> and I don't I think one time I, I got my brother doing it and he like had like a do-rag on and he was like spraying Windex and like screaming and like he got into the character and like was having so much fun and then I just went off the rails you know I yeah. like took my clothes I mean I'm nine uh-huh. you know and it's like his girlfriend was doing it my sister and her friend everyone was like playing I like got them into my world and I got so excited that I got these like straight like you know vanilla athletic people who are like Never do this. Yeah. And so I just went nuts and I got so excited. I took my clothes off. I started screaming. I mean, I got completely naked and was running around, you know, quote unquote, in character. And I scared. My family was like, like everybody was like, we can't entertain this world anymore because she just loses it. (laughs) Oh my God. Butt naked. Little Dana. Running around. I wish... I wish and that's had... when my, my brother was like, this game's over. This is getting too weird. <laughs> Did they get any of this on video? I actually, please, God. I know. I know. You know what's weird is I have so many videos. I can't find them. I was I just so talking about videos that with TJ. Of, of a, as a kid. Yeah, I have videos that I took like at friends' houses and stuff where we would put on like little shows and stuff. And I, I don't know where any of them are, but I'm like... I want to spend yeah. some time like searching all these out yeah. in my life. <laughs> oh my god, I have gold. I, I know have you have videos. gold. I have dance videos. Oh my god, where underwear on my head and I have braces and um, I don't know why, but I always kind of strip down. It's not really sexual. It's just kind of like a weird like why Freedom. is she taking her clothes? Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's I'm in the basement and I'm dancing to I got to get through this and I'm like falling and. <laughs> Making weird, fa- it's it's a, it's actually really entertaining, and I'm like, we, I need to put this on YouTube, but I also need to find it. Yeah, it's weird that like speaking of role models, like my older brother, my older sister were definitely role models of mine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and what was their mo? Like, what were they? They into? were cool. They were just they were both popular. They were really athletic. They were good at sports. They were friends with everybody, and I was just like wanted to be that. Mm-hmm. Because I mean, that's I think that's what you're kind of told to be yeah well you're you're told to feel accepted whatever that means yeah so i mean if you know if you if you have a type of environment you grew up in where you're in like a theater school and everybody's theatrical then you're accepted kind of just by nature but if you're in just a regular high school you feel like you have to be like that cool kid the jocks girlfriend like that kind of stuff yeah i kind of had like a double life in high school i went to a public school Till like noon, I took like my five core classes, and then I went to an, a theater school from um, one fifteen to to four thirty. Oh, that's really city. cool. Yeah, and they like literally. I mean, they like picked you up on a short bus, which was like the jo- the running joke of my family. Dana goes to school in a short bus. And yeah. I was like, it's good on the environment. Shut up. <laughs> There's only five of us being bussed to the city. We need a small bus, you idiot. And um. <laughs> It's a little sensitive for me. Yeah. Can you tell? Yeah. No, but uh, I, yeah, I love like a double life because I like, you know, I was kind of this like, I guess, wannabe popular cool girl. Like I dated like the cool guy. Yeah. So like I kind of like because of my brother and my sister, I was like, quote unquote, I guess cool because they were. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like I was like, um, what is it called when you're like something uh, we're missing it we're on our missing, vocabulary. Yeah. We really <laughs> are. What is it called when you do the thing and then that? The when thing? you do what? Let's try to figure this one out so we don't have double vocabulary. You know, we you don't have know. the in. It's the in. Oh, your catalyst. Yeah, you're like um. You know, I, it was like a popular thing by my name because uh, my brother was. Oh, you popular. was like my sister was popular, so I was like. 
you were just like automated automatically cool because of yeah. because of them and you know yeah there's a word for that too but then I would go to this theater school where I wasn't cool you know and I didn't I wasn't popular and I was just kind of a weirdo and I kind of like showed my like weirdo side there and um it, yeah it was kind of like a double life so like college was kind of me being like which person do you do resonate I, more with yeah what what was college like for you? <laughs> it was just me like figuring it out and yeah. just being, te- oh my God, terrified. When people say that college is the best time of their lives, I like want to strangle them. I'm like, it's literally the worst. I can't, you know, like, it, it's almost hard for me to really remember college. Like I was there for two years and I was doing 22 credits a semester and I... Did you graduate in two years? No, I left because I knew I wanted to do comedy by then. That's so smart. So I just was like, why do I keep spending... Why am I going to keep spending money um, on a tuition? I feel like I wasted my time, to but, be honest. Yeah, I mean, I don't feel like any time is wasted if you draw something from it. So, I mean, you just kind of have to take it for what it is. But... um and I still was paying off my student loans up until like last year. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's so crazy. And I didn't even finish. But I have... I. I got like some of my best friends in college. Luckily, I don't know how I've always found these people, whether it's in comedy or like just throughout my life in high school and stuff too. But like all my friends are really cool, but really fucking weird too and funny. Mm -hmm. And so it just kind of worked for all that shit. Yeah. Where everybody just was able to be themselves around each other. Well, you track what you are or right or where you're at. You're tracked where you're at. Yeah. So something. One of those attraction quotes. (laughs) But Yeah. I mean, I just always am. It's always fascinating for me to hear how people kind of got to like where they are now because we don't meet each other until way later in life where we already are kind of figuring out what we are and what we do. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't meet you until you were already doing comedy. So like, I knew you before we met, though. Yeah, because you were in it. I feel like you were kind of in the game a little bit longer when I got in. Mm -hmm. So you were like the one girl that was like killing it and like. I remember being like, oh my God, she's hot and she's funny. And so that was like a really cool, because I, because I felt like I couldn't be pretty and funny when I started. I know. So it was like, I think I knew about you before you knew me just because of like that dynamic. But yeah, it's interesting. I like really, um, I really like admired that because I was like, oh, she's owning like every part of herself. Well, and I feel like we have this really great group of friends now that does that, which is cool. Because, you know, I remember when I first started in Chicago, I would dress like what I look like now, like very kind of tomboy on stage. Um, And, you know, over the last like X amount of years, I just don't give a fuck. I just wear what I want to wear. Yeah. But I mean, it's just it's an interesting thing. The things that we think we're able to do and the things that we are actually able to do. Yeah. It's just I don't know. I think that play up whatever feels like whatever resonates with you. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, like I do, I do want to play up my beauty because it's like, well, I'm only going to have it for how long? I'm (laughs) aging. I'm aging here. Aging as we speak. I spent most of my twenties playing my looks down. Yep. Being like, I'm not attractive. I'm like the quirky, weird looking girl. Like just because I can like make ugly faces. Like, no, I'm attractive and I'm gonna own it yeah because it's empowering and exactly also women are beautiful and not just me and like we we can be really fucking funny and really beautiful and why is it one or the other and that's what really bothered me when I started stand-up it was like women were like really unattractive or lesbians or like fat and that's how they were rated on like how funny they are yeah and it's like, oh, if you're a comic and you're hot, you should just be an actress then. You know, I got that a lot from people. Me you too. You should just be an actress. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck you. Like, I'm I'm funnier than most of you motherfuckers in this room. Yeah. Like, Even the other day when I got to San Diego, because I was walking into this show and there was, you know, like 300 people. It was a big show. And I come in and the security was like, are you here for the show? I'm like, I'm on the show. And he's like, oh, what, you're a comic? And I was like, yeah. And he was like. Oh, but you're pretty though. Oh, and see? I was like, ah, see? <laughs> I was like, no, stop it. <laughs> yeah. That shit really, uh, it's, what's really funny is that all of these guys who gave me advice when I started doing stand up are either not doing stand up right now or 
Or you've surpassed them. I've surpassed them beyond measure. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just like, I'm I'm just like, you know what? If you like you know, I, karma works itself out. Yeah, exactly. That's all we'll say about that. Well, and it's fun now, like going back to your characters and stuff, it's fun to be able to like bust that out on stage. Cause it's like a less, like it's a less attractive version of date. Like it's like an alter ego. Oh, it's like a really unattractive, ver- like I can make myself look <laughs> so ugly. It's, it's, a, it's, I feel like it's a talent <laughs> to go from like, you know, being attractive to just like being butt ugly really 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 unattractive like it's yeah like i i love that i used to that was like i felt like my secret little web like weapon yeah when i was younger (laughs) to make people laugh you know i would just especially like with my sister and my my family like just making the ugliest faces oh yeah would make, no, I make love them crack the ugly up face game or just turning into like a disgusting character and like they would they yeah that they was one of it. my favorite compliments I ever got was my director at second city was like when I was like 21 he was like for for such a pretty girl you can make some really bad faces and I was like You're awesome thank you so much <laughs> thanks dude. are you flirting with me <laughs> yes I will have sex with I've you. never forgotten that never forgotten it so when you were younger did you get into any trouble in high school did you have like a time where you were like I don't know what the fuck I am and like part were you a partier did you oh my god I started drinking when I was like 14 okay yeah. me too yeah I drank a lot where did you grow I, up Connecticut okay yeah I, um, I, that's, that's, what's interesting is, so I was weird. I was really weird looking up until like 14, Mm -hmm. like weird looking, (laughs) like so awkward. Like the boys never liked me and I kind of like made peace with it. Cause I was like, I, you know, I can make people laugh and like, I, you know, I live in my own world and whatever. But then I got attractive and it was like guys, like right when I got to high school, like guys, all these guys started giving me attention and it was so confusing and um unexpected yep so i was just kind of slutting it up but i mean like making out it wasn't like i wasn't getting finger banged yet but <laughs> it was, took another year for that yeah i took another year but like uh, my sister i think i was like every other month i would have like a new guy i was like talking to uh-huh. and i would like go to parties we'd like drink together we'd like make out in a closet or like i don't know the back of somebody's trunk or I don't, where, wherever you make out yeah in a tree whatever and my sister was like you can't do that she really like, I don't and know. And you were like, watch me. I was like, why? Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> why not? And she's like, these are my guy friends, you know, like, cause they were like, a, she was a, two grades ahead of me. She's like, you can't just be like dating. Like you're like blowing through all my guy friends of like, <laughs> not blowing all that. Sounded yeah. like, you stop like blowing you just all my up. guy friends. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That was so loud. Um, but no, I mean, so then I, I kind of like put the kibosh on that. Mm hmm. And was like, I'm going to date this guy and have a serious relationship. And Oh, did you have a serious relationship in high school? Like most of high school, yeah. What? And college, I know. I That's why I've been single for so long because I like really jumped into a serious thing that was like deep and emotional and like at, at too young. And it was through college? Yeah, it was all through college. Wow. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's... And he was like, I want to marry you, like babies, everything. And... When I broke up with him, I was like, I need to be single for a long time. I didn't think it was going to be nine years long time. (laughs) Or wait, eight years. (laughs) Oh, my God. It's been – I mean, I've dated guys, but nothing like – Nothing serious. Nothing like we're going to label it and, like, do the whole thing. But, yeah. Yeah, that's that's how I was throughout my 20s. I I just didn't – I was just like, I'm just going to have – even with my fiancé now, we met, like, 12, 13 years ago. I know. I love this but story. But we were just You're like, just friends. yeah, we were just friends with like benefits on occasion. It's so perfect. It was so per- because th- then there was no pressure and then you could just let things happen naturally if they worked out. But I, I did try to have like one serious relationship when I was 24. I thought you were going to say threesome. With that ex. I, I did try I to have a, a threesome. I had a couple serious threesomes. <laughs> a couple a couple great ones. We have threesomes. Dana, what are you doing after the podcast? <laughs> I have to pack. Do you want to just come finger bang me while I... <laughs> um, yeah, but like I think back to... I think this was the best thing that ever happened to me. So when I, when I was in high school, you know, all of us kind of paired up. So one of my girlfriends was dating the really, the the funniest guy in school. And one of my other girlfriends was dating one of the best jocks in school for like, he played, he was like the hockey star. And then I dated the quarterback. 
so we all would hang out together and like it was just like fun you know you, you just go to the max you kind of yeah like we would totally go like a same if there was the max year. we would have gone to it but we had culvers because i'm from wisconsin <laughs> okay but i I remember knowing that I was going to break up with mine after we dated for like six months. It was pretty significant for high school. Um, I, I was going to break up with him. And then I heard that he was going to break up with me. So we had this like duel of where we could find each other in the hallway first to like break up with each other. Oh my but God, I, hilarious. I, it's just so funny when you think back on it. But when, after we broke up, I was talking about like hooking up with it. Cause I hadn't had sex yet. So it was a big reason why I think we broke up. Cause like he didn't, I don't know. I just wasn't putting out. And, uh, oh. and, uh, so he had, he had one, he's the quarterback. He has options. Yep. And he had one nut. And so I remember what? telling my friends he, why? about it. He was born with one nut. I think so. Or did he have to have it removed? I don't know. He I never, never got the, the full story? story. That's a, that's something you warned somebody about. And so about. it was the first nuts I had ever seen. You nut. have to tell. And so I didn't know. Story. I didn't know that he had one. So when I was trying to describe to my friends what like I thought a ball sack looked like, it was just one. It was ball. not correct. And so I learned about that after we broke up, which was a problem because then I accidentally told everybody because I didn't know that that was not normal. If you had one <laughs> boob, wouldn't you be like, "Yo, before we hook up, I just want to warn you, I have one titty, and the left one, whatever happened just to it, grab tell the story." At it. You would warn a guy, but I was too young. I was too young to have wherewithal then. So he I like warned you. That. I know that was rude. So it was just the weirdest breakup ever because we were all still like friends, and then everybody knew too much about his anatomy, and then I had to learn too much about balls, and then yeah. I just was like, I'm going to be single for a while. Yeah, and then I stayed single until I was like 24. <laughs> okay, yeah, that was my track record. Sometimes the, they scar you. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Did you, so you, you just stopped like partying kind of after this whole thing with your sister? No, I kept partying. You kept partying. Yeah. What is some, what is like some of your favorite Dana Moon party stories? Have you ever gotten in big trouble or anything like that? Oh yeah. Like oh, what? Yeah. yeah. I like trouble. I did some real stupid shit that I'm not proud. I mean, I like would get really drunk. Like I got so drunk at this one party. It was a Halloween party and I, I, I drove home. Oh fuck. And I don't remember getting home. Yeah. And I, I parked the car and like a crazy, like the car was like off, like into the grass and on the, the drive. And my mom was like, what time did you get home last night? And I like lied about it. And she's like, the car like is parked weird. And I was, I just like would totally, totally lied, which is yep. not me at all. But, um, that was, I think I, I did, I did. That was the dumbest thing I've ever done honestly yeah I'm like I actually really like think about that I'm like fuck that was so stupid but um my so Jeff Los he lived across the street from me and that was the party house so that's where all the parties were so thankfully for me it was literally I would just walk across the street down his driveway mm -hmm. and um I think I, I must have I wore my sister's white pants to this party and we were drinking red wine and I was drinking red smart. wine, very smart, in a full red solo cup, like it was a beer. Uh huh. Like I poured, like I like don't know, a whole solo cup yeah. full of wine. Yeah. So like half a bottle. Um. So, <laughs> and I was drinking it out of a straw. Oh. And man. I think I just thought it was like, yeah, this is like beer, but that's probably like I, I, I must have drank a full bottle of red wine, and I weigh like that 130 age. pounds. Yeah. 120 pounds, whatever. Yeah. And so I don't know what happened. I must have spilled the red wine all over my sister's white, brand new white pants. And she was at the party too. <laughs> she saw me and she's like, what the fuck? And I was so drunk. I didn't know. And so I was like, I didn't know what happened. So, so I just start like, I'm like, I'm just going to leave. So I start leaving the party. And so she's following me and she's like, you can't walk alone. You can't even walk. <laughs> <laughs> she's following me and and my boyfriend's following me and we go home and my sister's yelling at me and because I ruin her pants and we wake up my mom because we're fighting and my mom yep. comes downstairs and my mom's like you're drunk and I was like so what 
<laughs> and she was like, because my dad was a really bad alcoholic, so she was always like crazy about us drinking. So oh, being sure. drunk around your mom, like around my mom was like, it was no, like no, a no, button. No, it was like no. pushing a button. So then I, and then I don't know why, but my boyfriend was there. I don't know why he was there. He was there and I was like fighting with my mom and my sister and he was there. So I take these pants off in my kitchen. I take the pants off and I throw them at my sister. And I was like, I don't even need your pants. And I'm a, I'm a thong <laughs> in front of my mom, my boyfriend and my sister. Yeah. And they're like, Dana, you can. And they start yelling at me. And I was like, I don't need any of you. And I go outside and I just start running away. <laughs> just <no> pants on. <laughs> <laughs> and for whatever reason, my boyfriend's little brother and his f- little friend were on their bikes biking somewhere because I got so fucked up. We left the party so early. Like I must, I don't even know what time it was, but I was sprinting down the street with my ass out in front of his like little brother and little brother's friend. Oh my God. And my boyfriend was like chasing me. This is like the, the craziest like drunken Pied Piper story ever. It's, You're just like then, collecting people <laughs> behind your bare ass. The worst part, <laughs> the worst part is that I woke up in the morning covered in red wine vomit. Oh yeah. Like, like head to toe. Like I like this. This is the like. Oh my god! How did you not die? I honestly like my mattress. It was all over my sheets, and it was all like it got on my mattress, like in your mattress. Like it was a massive amount of vomit, and I don't remember puking. And that's the scariest part. Oh, like that's 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 how drunk I was. And after that, I was like, <laughs> no more red wine out of a straw. Yep. Ever. Just that though. More red wine, <laughs> um, but just not out of a straw. Drink the red wine, <laughs> no straw. Yeah. I had had so many events like that in, co- well, in high school because we were just learning how to drink. Like, Dude, that's why when I got to college, I'm it like, was great. Well, I, I was like, you guys are amateurs. Yeah. Like people me were too. getting drunk like idiots. And I was like, I did this all in call in high school. But by the time I got to college, I didn't really want to party anymore because I got it out, out of my system in high school. There was only one incident in college where I really fucked up and this is why I don't drink captain anymore, but I had broken my foot. It, I had in my freshman year, I had to get my tonsils out and I had a massive like foot break. So it was like a really challenging couple Same of time? months, like right after each other. So oh, wow. when, when I had my tonsils out, so I had my dorm room set up so cool. I had, um, I had a pull out futon below my lofted bed oh. and then b- between the two i had a hammock hanging oh wow so a lot I of could, orgies huh yes yeah, so i could just kind of choose a spot to pass out on it was so awesome three options depending on my mood if i wanted to climb or just plop oh, nice. or dangle you know i could kind of do any of those yeah. and so when i had my tonsils out i spent two weeks like sleeping in the hammock it was so relaxing and they had given me all this liquid morphine because mm, nice. i couldn't take pills and i didn't take it because before I had my tonsils out, I had like the Sarah Silverman thing where my throat almost exploded. Oh my God. And so that was so painful that when I had my tonsils out, like it didn't, it just felt like relief. So I saved this stuff. I saved this liquid morphine. You're like, yeah, when, when shit's about to go down. I was like, some night I'm going to party and I'm going to be, I'm going to be a cheap date because I'm only going to, I'm going to take a cap full of this and then yeah. I'm just going to drink like a little bit and then that will set me straight. But I'm young mind of an addict. Didn't, Look at you. Didn't know how things worked yet. Like the chemistry of stuff. And so I, I had Percocets and Vicodin when I got yeah. my tonsils out and I was probably 15 and I was like, I'm holding on to these for like when I'm at a party. Yeah, yeah. Same thing. That's what you think. You're just like, I'm just going to save these for the right time. And so I br- I'd broken my foot by entering my friend's dorm room like Kramer from Seinfeld. But there happened to be a dumbbell on the oh, floor. Shit. So I like stepped on it and like ro- <gasps> rolled my foot under. Oh, God. So anyway, I had a broken foot and I made the doctors give me a walking cast because I was like, it was winter in Minneapolis and I was like, I'm not going to fucking wear. So I had my walking cast. I'm, I'm at this party and before I leave, I take this cap full of liquid morphine 
I'm sitting in my hammock drinking Captain just on the just neat because it, I don't we think didn't you're have supposed to mix morphine and rum. No, I don't think you're supposed to mix morphine and anything hard <laughs> or anything alcoholic. And you know, in college, you don't have ice. You, everything you drink is warm when you're making it in your room. Yeah. So like, I was drinking warm Captain Morgan. And I went, it sounds relaxing. It was, it was nice. And I was laying in the hammock and then my friend calls and she's like, okay, come over to my room. We'll get ready to walk to this party. And I got up to walk and I just mushed to the floor. It was like fear and loathing in Las Vegas where no, like, like I couldn't walk. Like, or you're like on Quaaludes, like Leonardo DiCaprio and Wolf of Wall Street. That's exactly what it was. It was totally Quaaludes. And so that scene is so funny when he's so trying funny. to drive. <laughs> oh my God. It's so good. It's so good. You're like those, those are my college years. <laughs> and so, and then I continued to go out that night and I drank like an entire bottle of captain that night. How did you move? I don't know. And did I, you, did somebody weaken at Bernie's you? I don't know. I mean, I just, I existed out in the world for like hours. And then I woke up in my hammock with my face and my arms through the hammock holes, and I had removed my boot and puked in it. Thank God you were on your stomach. I was on my stomach dangling through the hammock <laughs> with my, and puked through it into my boot. <laughs> and that was like my scariest puke. That was your bottom. <laughs> that was my bottom. This is why I don't want to have children because I don't know how I'm still alive. I know. And to, to, to think to like create life and then just be like, I'm going to let it out in this crazy fucked up world. Yep. And expect oh. it to not do what I did. Yeah. It's like... <laughs> it's insane I know and and like I've talked to my fiance about that because I've always been on the fence about kids I'm so on the fence about kids and yeah I mean I'm just like it would just have to hit me one day to be like okay that sounds like the right thing but like right now I'm like no oh, that's not even close same thing though I'm like if they do anything like what I did I'm just gonna have to like drink so much to not worry about yeah. if they're okay a lot of prayer all of my you gotta friends, be spiritual or something yeah right? you gotta pray a lot and I just be like god protect this dumb idiot yeah <laughs> this ball <laughs> to not kill themselves <laughs> like i almost did 80 million times yeah oh my god it's weird because you get older and um not that i do i don't get older but people <laughs> people do get older um so Some i've heard people. so i've heard yeah but it's like <sighs> biological chemical yeah Jeanette I whatever it is it's chemical and I see babies and my heart explodes and my vagina tingles a little bit not in a sexual way but it's like a put something up here really yeah my body your body wants to create I don't yeah I don't want to be a mom I don't want to be pregnant my body does though. Yeah. And that's what's fucked up. Yeah. It's really it's weird. It's fucked up. Well, and I I was just talking with another uh, friend of ours um cuz we were talking about, you know, being in our 30s and how they like make you try to freeze your eggs and shit. When I turned 27, they were trying to make me do that. Oh, I a remember. guy on a date told me that I should freeze my eggs. What? On a first date. What a good way to get fucked. Yeah. He's <laughs> like, "Yeah, you probably should freeze your eggs now or next year." And I was like, "Check please that you're paying for and I'm leaving." what the fuck he yeah you didn't see him again right oh of course i gave him a second i do this thing where i'm like i'm gonna give him one more chance is it ever a good choice no no and now i'm done doing that i've learned my lesson i always give guys a second a second date and i had i had the worst date of my life probably on wednesday oh my god okay Um, talk about it so two weeks ago when this podcast comes out yeah and um this is what sucks about it so he's gorgeous. He's really kind, super tall, mm-hmm. um, a nice person. Yeah. Right? The most boring human I have ever interacted with in my life. I literally fell asleep. What? I literally fell asleep on the date. Like what? Like no good conversation? No. no. And it makes me so angry. Like he asked me one question the whole date. I he talked what? the whole time and he talked about nothing how is that even possible he talked about no and i was just like sitting there like and he asked me about comedy um no he didn't ask me about comedy he goes <laughs> he told me he goes he's also from a different country he's been here for six years so like you know i was no trying to, but you know by then he was like you know the thing about comedy is that this isn't even his accent at all but i but i want to do this accent he goes 
the thing about comedy is that, you know, um, you have to like watch a lot of comedy to like know what type of you like. And I was like, what are you even saying? <laughs> Yeah, dude, I knew that when I was nine, man. I knew I liked Jim Carrey when I was nine because he made me laugh. I knew I liked silly, goofy shit. Ugh. I was nine. Oh, I, why, why are we having this conversation Bad as an adult? dates are the fucking worst. I literally, and then he goes, he goes, I like puzzles. I like Sudoku. And he goes, oh, am I boring you? And I go, yeah. Did I said, you say yeah. that? I go, yeah, this is so boring. <laughs> And he didn't take that hint to open up and ask me questions. He asked me what I like to talk about. Yeah. And I was like, literally nothing that you're saying. How about let's start with. <laughs> well, I mean, that's the first rule of conversation. If you ask me what I like to talk about and then didn't even talk about the things I was bringing up. Yeah. I like I. It fascinates me sometimes. What does he do for work? Do you know what line of work he does? Be the most boring man on the planet. <laughs> no, he, <laughs> he gets he's a paid reporter. for it. Really? I know. Holy He's shit. A sports reporter. Oh my god. Sports reporter. Still though. I mean, how how are you that bad? I We had really good text chemistry, so I'm pissed because I thought that I feel like I'm good at reading how a date can go based off of text messages. So this kind of like threw me for a loop. Was he a fast texter or did he have time in between? Um, both. Cuz I feel like that can be both. You know, it was a good mix of like when we were messaging each other, we were messaging. And then when we weren't, we probably weren't for like a day. Yeah. But it was like, it was consistent and like a good amount. It wasn't too much and it wasn't right. not enough. Yeah. But anywho, I literally, ca I called the Uber and the Uber was taking so long. He's like, why? You seem so stressed. And I'm literally like, you don't have to wait. Like, I'm fine. He's like, I'm a gentleman. And you're and like, like, this is not chivalrous right now. Some I, people just don't get the hint. I... I do not miss having to go. This is what's so nice about being in a long-term relationship. Like, yeah, I tell me why your life is better than I mine, still, Natasha. Please. No, no, no. But I still, I <laughs> like while Justin was out of town, for example, um, in Australia. Like, I hung out with a bunch of my guy friends. You know, I went and caught up, did a bunch of like dinners and stuff. I meet new people all the time, and I'll still go grab dinner with them. And it's not like a date because you know maybe that helps because the pressure's off. It's mm -hmm. not a date. It's just me like having a new friend. Mm -hmm. Um, but the, I haven't, I haven't had to experience really terrible conversation in a while until I went to this party recently where it was like all modely people and, but you can walk away. You can. And I did, but I first, I timed how long it took him to ask me something about myself. Cause he was just talking about himself the whole time. Like, there's just so many people that don't either. There's two things. Either people are bad in social situations. And so they don't know to not talk about themselves. And then I don't think it's that bad because they just don't know what to say. You know? I mean, you, you want to give them credit if they're, if someone's nervous. Yeah. You want to give them like, because when I'm nervous around somebody, I'm, I'm kind of weird. Yeah. I think that's just human nature, but then there's the other people that like, just think that they're the most interesting and they don't ask anything about you. And you're like, don't you know how talking works with people? Oh, you mean like all of LA <laughs> and most people in Los Angeles? I don't really care about everything that you do on a daily basis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm just interested to, I, I love hearing about people's dates. I feel like I should just interview people about their dates at some point. This one, well, this one, I was proud of myself because I got out of there. You know, I, I was there for an hour and 21 minutes. That's and, a long time for a bad day. And yeah, and, and probably 13 seconds. Um, <laughs> I literally was counting down. But and I, <clears throat> it was one of those things where I'm like, I was giving so many. I'm like, oh, it's almost midnight. And he's like, it's 1120. And I was like, yeah, I'm getting tired. Like normally, like I stayed on a, I did a six hour date one time mm -hmm. with a with a douche canoe and that was <laughs> I learned my lesson because I was like I wasted six hours of my life on a date with somebody that like sucked sucked mm -hmm. but he wanted to keep hanging out he wanted to, to like keep going so I was like oh I guess you know I'm a subservient woman or whatever I don't know what's going on <laughs> in my head but I really learned my lesson with this guy and I, I got the fuck out of there yeah and he wants to hang out again he wants to hang out again I was like dude Get the hint. He asked me how the date was. And I go, you talked about yourself the whole time. Did you say that? Yeah. And he apologized. He's like, I'm so embarrassed. Can we please start over? Like, I was like, dude, no hard feelings. 
<laughs> I kept saying dude. I'm like, get the dude, get the point. Like yeah. we're not, this isn't a thing. But uh, I want him, I want him to be aware of that for when he dates another girl. Yeah. Because, because it's, it's, he doesn't know. That's very giving of you. Thank you. <laughs> Hashtag I'm a role model. Dana, what do you have coming up that you're excited about? What shows, any touring? What do you I got? I don't even know. Um, <laughs> just. Or just normal stuff that you have going on in a reg. Yeah, I'm a, you know, I love my, I do a podcast too, Superficial Magic on iTunes. Um, it's comedy With and Megan, spirituality. Right? Yeah. So it's manifestation and comedy and us trying to get our messes of lives together. And um, sometimes we are getting it together and sometimes we're not. Yep. Ain't that the truth? So yeah, that's fun. Um, hopefully tour dates, they're all um, up on my website, danamoonme.com and on Instagram at danamoonme. <laughs> 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 and uh, follow her because she's extremely fun on social media. And even though we both hate it, we're, we're both great at it. <laughs> and addicted. <laughs> so addicted. And go see her characters live because she's going to be debuting Diane a lot coming up. Oh, yeah. Diane is amazing. Check her out. Check her out. And you can follow me at NPH Comedy on Instagram and Twitter. You can follow the podcast at Future Role Model on Instagram or at Role Model Pod on Twitter. And you can follow the network at Comedy Pop-Up or at CPU Podcasts. Anything you want to say to everybody for the new year since this comes out on New Year's Eve? This is the year to let your light out. And when I was on Molly, that was a very clear sign I got from the universe, mm -hmm. especially for women. It is time to let our lights out. That's I have what we're been doing. saying that for 2019, 2018 was like a preparation year and 2019 is going to be an execution 2019 year. 2019 is going to be so good for everybody. I can fucking feel it. Yes. I'm like so excited. Me and too. And it's like, just be done with 2018. Like, let's yeah, just be done. done with it. Yeah. yeah. The next week isn't even going to exist, which is perfect because I'm not going to remember most of it because I'm going to be in Wisconsin. <laughs> oh my God. That's so fun. Yeah. So also, I fly there tonight. Maybe I can find this note that I wrote right after I did Molly. Perfect. Oh Please do. Did you write um, yourself something cool? I think I wrote myself. This is for women. Read it. Read it. Okay. This is for women. <laughs> okay. Our life force is so powerful. We cannot give it away to anyone but each other. Wow. Mm, Bomb drop. <laughs> Molly Dana. <laughs> Molly Dana. Molly Dana. <laughs> Oh my gosh. You have I kind of love that. You have to send that to me because I write with Sharpie quotes Shit. on my wall in my kitchen and I want to add that one. Yeah. So dude, screenshot it and send pretty it cool. to me. I thought it was going to be cheesy for a sec, screenshot but that's Screenshot cool. and send that bitch to All me. All right. I'm sending the bitch to you. All right, guys. Happy almost new year. Follow Dana. Follow everybody. Be happy. Drink a beer and don't